Hello and welcome to another episode of the Expat Coffee Break podcast. My name is Javier and I'm your host. This is a show dedicated to sharing personal experiences of immigrants and telling their stories of what it's like to move to a new country. This is part three of my conversation with my friend Martin, where we're going to be talking about some of the cultural shocks that we had moving and living in the U.S., yeah, and so this this wraps up our conversation where we talk about our experience and we leave it to the audience to let us know what you want us to talk about in the future. Without further ado, I'll leave you with it. Enjoy. Well, the cultural difference that we found is, is very challenging at the beginning. Talking about the cultural differences that you found, uh, tell me about how was that for you when you first moved? It's very different. And, and very challenged at the beginning because you, you, when you, when you arrived to the U.S., you came through your, with your mind already made with all the relationship that you are um, involved at the time. And it's only work related. In my case, my experience, it was only with my boss and some of the engineers there that are very, very nice. Yeah. So you don't think like they think to add this. The difference, the different cultural, like I, uh, Mexican cultural or European cultural or um, African American culture, you know. So in this case, uh, I was feeling a little bit of challenge because I don't know how to act and how to receive because we we in especially at the very north uh, at, at north of U.S. you are different. You're- now, to help you a little bit with that, you're saying that when you first moved in, some places where you went, people were just looking at you because you you were different. Yes. But that was mostly in your mind because, I mean, the U.S. has such a big cultural mix that mm-hmm. you're not, you're just another person. There's plenty of people. Yeah, but- different cultural. Yeah, I remember when I, when I moved to the apartment, here in the apartment, we have a, a park. Mm-hmm. So we take we took our little kid most of the days. Or Th- the sunny thank you days. for giving out our location. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and we will be moving. <laughs> <laughs> so in that park, there is a lot of people from different countries. Like I, I remember that Martincito, my little one, he met a uh, a one guy from Russia. That is that that is between her dad is from Ghana and no. His dad is from Ghana and her mother is from Russia. So, but they mostly speak Russian. And then he met another people from from Germany. Uh, and one of his best friend right now is from Philippines. So it's a mix of Philippines and American because his dad is is American. So when you when you notice like there is some a very very broad uh, cultural shocking difference. And from right now, there is here where we live, there is a lot of people from, from Africa, Somalia, from, there is a lot of Somalis and you notice they behave like how be, how the kids different behave from, from the people from US or from the people from, from Mexico, you know, so you have to adapt. So it's, it's. For me, it was very challenging because when, when my little one was playing with, with their kids, for instance, if he played with the kids from Somali, we have to be very careful because we might take some of the my little one behavior like pushing or playing a little bit hard. Felt like a, they were attacking them. So they felt attacked? Yes, in one case, yes. I remember one kid who was playing with my little one and they were playing with the water guns. So they were very, ah, they were doing that with my little one and my little one, he was running all the way around. And then they, they switch, like my little one started chasing them and it's only chasing them. So they, they were running away from him and, and they were feeling like my little one want to hit them, but it was not like that. So I remember that the, the little one around four years old run over his mom. And start crying like, ah, he wants to hit me or something like that. Even though they were playing a little bit before. But it, 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 I, would, I, feeling, I was feeling very 
like, come on, come on, dude. Like, you were playing with him and you were throwing water to him and he was okay with yeah. that. But as soon as we switch, like, positions, like, they, the he was he start felt, following you. Well, intimidated. Yes, exactly. So yeah, smaller kid. Mm -hmm. And and it was only like two experience like that, and and I don't want to generalize. Yes, generalize, but it's how I feel about that. And and my little one don't speak English, so there is another barrier that she that he found already. So I'll, sometimes he, for some reason, he likes to seek, chase and seek, chase and seek, chase and. Seek. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Or, but yes, hide and seek or something like that. So they chase all over the park. And as soon as they touch someone, they start. Mm. So what happened there is people don't understand him sometimes. Or oh, the other kids, the other kids from, from U.S. start giving order to him and he doesn't get it. So it was a little bit challenge on, on that side for him. And he starts doing like hey, don't follow me don't follow me don't they they start telling to my little one don't follow me don't follow me and he doesn't understand so i was feeling mm -hmm. like why are you doing that like it's not it's he's only one to play but i need to let him like experience that so so that he can learn yeah. and adapt because i don't want to be over paternalist with him that is so sad i mean for for both your kid that is going through that cultural shock, he can't communicate and he mm -hmm. just wants to play. Mm -hmm. And the other kid feeling threatened by an innocent, innocent play. But at the same time, I mean, the only thing I can think of is maybe that other kid has had previous experiences where maybe he was bullied or something and mm -hmm. he immediately got triggered and thought he was going to get hit by your, your little kid. But... You know, of course, that wasn't the case, but he didn't understood. And because he couldn't communicate, he was just felt more threatened. And keep in mind, I mean, I don't want to go in through all of the racial stuff that is going through, is going through, is going around here in the U.S., but. And, and, and that, that is very inter interesting because there is people like, it doesn't matter of the, of the race. It's also, we found another kids from from whatever the place and and they are very nice so it's very weird to find that because you find like uh, i don't know some 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 people from somalia are, uh, behave this way and some other kids from somalia behave very different and they are very nice some people like from us they behave on this way and some people from the other from same from us behave the different way because I remember that my little one um, is very happy when he found someone to play with. It doesn't matter if he doesn't understand or not. Yeah. And and the the kid doesn't care. So it's it's very, as you mentioned, we don't want to go through the racial status or challenge that status because those the, the kids that are nice or not nice are are teach to be that or i thought to be that mm -hmm. so that that's that's and and that part is very difficult as a parent for me to because i i cannot give advice my little one my four mm -hmm. years old like you need to behave this way he doesn't understand and he doesn't care so i noticed that he doesn't care which color of the skin is the is are those those guys or or which language he now understands spanish and english so he said oh they are speaking english or they are speaking Spanish, and oh, he tried to conversate in, or in English that he doesn't know yet, or in Spanish that is the language that he's carrying on right now. And what about yourself and your wife? Did you guys found any cultural shock for yourself yeah. in the U.S., other than the cold and the things we talked before? Yes, a, a little bit challenged, but it was more because of the language barrier, like, like you imposed to yourself so at the beginning i was feeling more challenged to speak uh, because of myself and because i got nervous now i'm i think i have the same level of english a little bit maybe i improve a little bit more over the year but i feel more comfortable in speaking so mm -hmm. other than that it is the same so normally what i'm trying to do because i am not a very social person but i challenge myself like mm -hmm. you have to 
you have to start conversation no matter what. So, and then depending of the response, you know if you are going through that conversation or you just move around. When I, especially when I'm in the park with my kids. So I met another parents. Yeah. So besides of that, I didn't, I didn't notice a big, big difference, especially in the area that we live in, in, mm -hmm. in Apple Valley. I think it's very open-minded. And... And it, most of the people are are very nice. So besides of the in in Mexico, especially especially when you are you come from a small town, everyone says good morning, everyone say hello, bye. Mm -hmm. So here is is a very different. So you can go by a person and they don't say anything at all. Well, older person they are very nice. So if you cross by a, a, an older person, older person, I mean more than 70, they say, mm -hmm. good morning. How cute is your kid? So they are very nice and very friendly, you know, but regular people, you, you are walking through a hall and they don't even look at you. And, and, but I think it's, it's very normal and that I, I don't feel, I feel in, uncomfortable because I always say hi to everyone, so, you know, and I don't want to lose that part. And the other diff the the other chalk different that I notice is at work as well, uh, because even though it's a very multicultural office, we have people from everywhere, especially now that the big box is from is from India. And there are still some people like they, besides of that, they don't been exposed to be around people like. In different cultures uh -huh, and different accents and at the beginning i remember that i was very i was feeling very challenged for some other engineers in in my in my department that they yeah. don't understand me and i get more nervous yeah. and more, more nervous you're the first you're the first non-english speaker in your department now yeah, you are correct you're yeah. the first i didn't think different either. culture engineer in your department all of the other engineers they're all local Pretty much mm -hmm. from Minnesota or somewhere, somewhere in the middle, in the no, in the north. What's this called? This region called the Midwest. Northwest. The Northwest. Uh, I no. don't know. I don't know, but in Minnesota, around Minnesota, around Wisconsin. Minnesota, the, I think it's the Midwest. Yeah. So you're the first engineer. So you were, you were spearheading a cultural shift in your department mm -hmm. without knowing. Yeah. So what kind of challenges did you found when you're trying to communicate with your peers? Well, a lot of a lot of challenges, especially because I at the beginning, as I mentioned, I was feeling a little bit nervous about that. So the mm -hmm. more the more they ask me, "What did you say?" the more nervous I get, and the mm -hmm. more the more I forget my English. And that's one part. The other part is when we when they start talking about technicalities, but real real technicals, like they they are speaking about how they are the acoustic behavior of, of, of a speaker mm -hmm. or uh, the waves or I don't know, the frequency performance. And, and they start, right. it's, they just start talking about very, very, very fine details of how they design mm -hmm. and a speaker is when I was okay. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know that even in, in so English in was still your biggest buyer at work mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. In my, in my case, English wasn't that big of a buyer because I was already working with that group, with mm -hmm. the group that I'm working here when even when I was in Mexico. So I was used to speak English a lot of the time and I knew most of them. What was challenging to me was rather than communicating or speaking was the way of saying things and how my message was perceived. Okay, yeah. So because we, or or english is i don't want to say broken it's not broken because we can communicate and you're definitely getting way better than when you first got you're getting come more confident so it's not a broken english but it's limited mm -hmm. or the 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 words that we know are less you can make you can improve that you can read and you can of course learn new learn new words and improve your vocabulary mm -hmm. but when i first moved I had some very awkward moments in the office and some of those make are right now. I, I think about them and it's really funny and they're not safe for work. They're not things you say to them. And if you got HR next to you, 
you don't want to have that uncomfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. And I know my, my friend Andy was in a place, was we were talking and we, we were discussing something about camping and I said something completely, completely out of, out of context because I didn't knew what the word meant. I used it because I was trying to be part of a conversation. I just said something that was rare, really off, really off topic. But everybody was like, what? <laughs> Let's, let's just let the Mexican be. But another guy said, no, I think we should correct this. This is not right. And, and that's something that I found that people don't usually correct you and you don't understand until somebody reacts to it. Um, I don't want to say what I, I don't want to say what I said that time because it's definitely not something I want to re repeat. But so, for example, if you say, uh, we talk about correcting later, mm -hmm. what Rata Fernandez is, but some things that I, some expressions I am, I, because I learn a lot of my English through TV or video games. So I have these expressions that I used to say, or I still say that might not be the best to express at that moment, okay. or it might not be politically correct in the office. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of awkward moments with my peers where like, what is this guy trying to say? Or they might think that the severity of what I'm trying to say is more than what it actually is because I was expressing it in a way that was felt more severe to them because I wasn't, I mean, I didn't really know what those words mean. Well, as somebody else here in the U S might think, wow, that's pretty harsh. So for example, one thing, if you say unacceptable, that's unacceptable. If you say that in, in Mexico, I mean, it's, that is unacceptable in Spanish. It's like, okay, well then what? I mean, it's okay. No big deal. Mm -hmm. We'll try to figure something out. We actually say that a lot anyways. But here, if you say it's unacceptable, it's trying to make a stand. It's a where to say it's, it's a big, no, no, it's like a big stop. Mm -hmm. And it's usually when they say it, they raise their voice. And that's, that's when you say, you, that's when you know the shit hit the fan. Oh. And so I had some instances where similar words that I was using, I used them and my peers were reacting like, or my manager was like, what? You sure? Okay. What's going on? Or maybe I said something and they will react right away. Who said that to you? And like, oh, I think I repeated it wrong, but this is how I remember it because this is what I understood. So I changed some words to what I can repeat. It's, it gets really sticky really mm -hmm. quickly. So let's talk about correcting. Will you and I talk about once before how when you make a mistake, not a lot of people correct you or Mm -hmm. Make a pause and say, hold on, Martin. I think what you're trying to say is this. And the way, the correct way to say it is this. You're making it. Yes, Does I, that I happen to, to you? Uh, yes, all the time. And I have to ask you. So normally when I try to speak with someone and, and I notice that they are not fully understanding what I'm trying to say. And then I ask them, what is the correct way to say that? And, and normally they reply, ah, the cor the, that was the correct way to say it. And I was thinking, no, it's not because you didn't understand. But what happened, and they explained me at the beginning because I was trying, I was having this conversation is that they think, and most of the people in, in the office, they say, you are doing, so you already have, you already have a, a language. So you speak Spanish is your, your mother language. Yeah. And then you know another language. And most of us referring me to them. Most of us, we don't speak another language. So you making the effort to try to communicate with us that we don't speak another but English, another language but English, is a huge effort for you. So they appreciate that part. But at the beginning, it's like, okay, it's okay, but I need to improve anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I need you to... You want to do better. Yes, I need to improve my communication because at the end, I will live in U.S., so I have to be better speaking in U.S. and speak in my mind and, and have a better conversation with them. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter if it does. It doesn't matter how good I am in Spanish. What this matters is how can I express myself or can I have a better communication with them? So that would be a really nice, like the only people that took that time and I remember and, and that start happening in Hermosillo is Mike Kiefer, which was the plant manager in Hermosillo. We were very close and and she cor and he correct me like uh, okay the proper way to say that is this and and especially when i start taking english lessons at uh, at bosch because they offer that 
So every time that I see him here and when I'm trying to express myself and if he noticed that something is out of context or can be, I don't know, expressed different way uh, or more easy for Minnesotans or for English speaker, he correct me. But other than that, sometimes my boss, but I have to ask him several times to do that. But I, for instance, if I speak in with someone and they say that, okay, I think if you say that, or I think if you correct this word with this word, or this is the correct pronunciation even, I will stop with that in my mind and I will improve that. But nobody, because I think they think it will be impolite. Like yeah. if they correct me, I will feel like, oh, you are judging me. And I feel, yeah. so I think it's because of that, but that yeah. doesn't help. You, know? you, have a, you have a mindset of con continuous improvement. Mm -hmm rather than a mindset of, fe of feeling ashamed or feeling attacked, mm -hmm. which they, who knows what exactly. other people is thinking. So mm -hmm. you're going to threat lightly or you're going to, you're going to go on the safe side and assume you don't want, you're going to be polite mm -hmm. because you're, you want to assume that person might be offended. So instead just polite. And what I find is you and I have a good enough English, whereas we can let, We can make ourselves understand, understood, mm -hmm. and we're at a level where we it's up to us because uh, most people are going to understand what we're saying and they're not going to correct us because they, they get the idea and then they reply back. And in my case, what I found is what I need is not only, yes, vocabulary is great. You need to make it as wide as you can. Same, same for Spanish. I can assure you our Spanish is very poor. but why What I noticed myself, what I needed to work in more was intonation, like pronunciating things the right way mm -hmm. and using my mouth the correct way because I, I was, I'm very lazy. I'm a very lazy talker, even in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm very lazy. You moving my lips and my, and my tongue, tongue. And it's, I, I needed to learn to use the, the correct way to intone and also Not, not so much pronunciation, it's tied together, but and also now, the conjugation. Conjugation of past tense, he, she, her, him, he, blah, blah. All of that, it's very difficult for, for me for some reason. And, and now you, that you say that, well, in the office, like, I think they are expecting that you, I am not fully a speaker or, or fully conjugate or whatever yeah. you say. Yeah. Or you use the past tense or, or et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, They are expecting that, so it's like uh, no broken English, but not completely English. But I remember when I joined to the gym uh, uh, where I'm doing CrossFit, yeah. and I try to express myself th with them. They they expect that I they their expectation is that I speak perfect English. Uh huh. They are not impolite. They are very 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 nice. So they ask me as many times as as they don't understand that I explain myself. Uh, but I feel that because they they are not related with people that with different accents. So they are normally around people with English accent. How did they receive you in the gym? How did they receive having somebody that, I mean, is from a different country, speaks a different language? It's very particular in, in, in my case, because I think CrossFit itself is very open mm -hmm. for, for, it's for whatever, mm -hmm. for whatever people that wants to do CrossFit, they receive with upper arms normally. But here in the U.S., because of the price and because it's, it's very particular, it's, uh -huh, it's, it's for a very segment, segmented environment or say segmented people mm -hmm. because it's, it's a, a little bit expensive here. So, for instance, in my gym, they are only white people. They aren't even like African-American. Yeah. So that's I, I think I'm, I am the more darker <laughs> that are at the yeah. gym, which is. Okay, and we are from Mexico, and, and we feel that different, but they are very happy with that. I remember that I, that I talked with the owner, Andrew, which is a very, very, very good people. So he all the time tell me and tell Diana, we love you guys to have you here. We love, and... <laughs> and <laughs> And, and that makes me feel very good, but I, at the same time, very challenged because I have to like portray, represent. Uh, repre <laughs> represent or portray 
what what I think or where I am or where I am from. So that's a little bit challenging. And, and, and I remember with one of the coaches, I get very, he's very open and, and he's very nice with me and, and Diana. But sometimes uh, I don't know why still I'm getting very nervous when I when he doesn't understand me. So there is a few people like they are not related with people with different accents. Mm -hmm. So they they get struggle understand me. But cultural different, they are very open. So they invite us, they invite us to every event that they have. So which yeah. is very, very nice. At least for with the people that I've interacted, I've been very fortunate that way as well. Um in my case, I I try to embrace the culture by going out, doing outdoor activities, fishing, ice fishing, camping. Mm -hmm. So there's a friend from the office, a co-worker, you know, as well, Andy. He took me fishing a few times and camping. And so I met, I was, I became good friends with him and other folks from the office. But I met other, I met other people from his group fishing and culturally they're always like wanting to know more or oh, how do you do this are you you fish in mexico what type of fish do you fish and they were surprised to know that ice fishing with them in a huge lake frozen lake was my second time fishing because mm -hmm. they wanted to know about fishing stuff from another place mm -hmm. like culturally they don't care where you're from they don't care uh, your color or skin but they wanted to know about what you're sharing with them how do you do it over there and same thing with camping and hiking and things like that. There was just one time in one of those trips that something weird happened, but I think it was more of the alcohol involved <laughs> rather than people. So one person was getting kind of loud and he was talking about me, you know, the Mexican, the Mexican this, the Mexican that, the Mexican did this, the Mexican said that. And he was getting a little bit uncomfortable because he wasn't being rude, but he was getting more like the joking around like La Carrilla. Mm -hmm. The joking around was very incisive and it was getting uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so one of them told him, hey, you might want to tone down a little bit because you're getting uncomfortable. And I wasn't really uncomfortable. I was noticing how it was getting kind of heavy. I was preparing to fire back and say, all right, man, so you're going to get along with me. You're going to call me and such. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to call me calling you. Now you're playing. But it didn't get to that because the, the other guy kind of toned it down and said, hey, you're drunk. Stop it. Because this is not, you're not, you're not looking good. Yeah, I mean, it was more of the alcohol. He wasn't getting offensive, but he was starting to use these stereotypical words where I was like, okay, all right, I'm ready. I don't care. I'm not getting offended. But if you want to play, you better be ready to play. Because mm -hmm. if you, if you want to get along, you better be ready to re receive some punches back from if you want to play, mm -hmm. otherwise don't even touch topic. And then that's the way I, I am. And that's the way I've dealt with. Other than that, I never felt anyone being trying to be racist to me or trying to or trying to be segregate me or whatever. I never felt that, especially in the office, nobody from work. Uh, because like you said, most people are used to deal with different cultures and different, mm -hmm. different nationalities and languages. And outside of, outside of work, I guess only when I go to small towns, that's the only place. But the only thing that happens is they just have a hard time understanding your accent. Mm -hmm. And I work really hard to improve my accent, to not have a thick Latino accent. Yeah. So it's, it's surprising to me to find out that even after so much effort, they're still having a hard time understanding some words because that's, that's the way I've learned how to pronounce them and they still cannot, cannot understand. So there was this one time we went, uh, there was another friend, we were driving up north to Kevin, to Andy's cabin, mm -hmm. and we stopped by at Taco Bell mm -hmm. to get some lunch. Okay. And so my friend wanted a quesadilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the drive through mm -hmm. And so, oh, yeah, I want the chicken quesadilla. The what? He said chicken quesadilla. My friend, I said, okay, quesadilla, yeah. quesadilla. And you said in Spanish. And so I just go through the drive through and I, and I start the speaker from whatever. And it's like, all right, I'll have uh, two chicken quesadillas. 
And the person that later allowed two what, sorry? Two chicken quesadillas. Two chicken quesadillas. Mm -hmm. And then my, my friend's like, nah, dude, you're way up north. You gotta say it in the American way. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. all right. Hello, my get two chicken quesadillas. Oh, yeah, the number two with hot sauce. Quesadillas? I was over, I overdid it, but she understood right away when I said quesadillas. I said quesadillas, and then she got it. I'm like, what the? I was thinking more like in quesadillas. 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 Quesadilla. Quesadilla. I mean, every person says it differently, Quesadilla. but because he said it that way, I wanted to make fun of the other lady, <laughs> but she got it. Wow. I thought she wasn't going to get it. I said quesadillas, <laughs> and then she got it, and then... Well, number two. Oh, yeah, the number two. I'm like, oh, crap. So everybody says it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, but other than that, I haven't felt any resistance from the people because of my culture. Mm -hmm. I guess in reality, there's more resistance from myself. I mean, I, I try to embrace the culture with the older activities and some things, but there's more resistance because I still want to go to Mexican food. I still want to do with mo mostly I meet with other, other Mexicans. So there's more resistance on my part, I guess. Yeah. But that's normal. That's natural because that's the culture you grew up with and that's the people you like to hang out with because you can relate to. And it's very different because, for instance, for us, it's, it's very easy to, to get along and to make plans. Like yesterday that we went to the to the state park, Yeah. Uh, you yeah. you told me one like night before. Days. No, one night before. Okay, okay. let's go to, to National Park, whatever. Yeah. Okay, let's prepare for that. Yeah. And that's, but here, if you want to do something special or, or even uh, dinner, go to dinner yeah. with, with your friends, you have to be in advance like two or three weeks or something. The more, the, the, if a month, a month is like the best time, mm -hmm. two weeks at least, but a month is better. So you can, they can schedule it. Yes. Which is, and I don't know, it's more. That's the right way to do it. Because I mean, that way you're being respectful to the other person's I, time. I, I understand. But, but, it's, but it's the cultural difference that yes. is to get along, to, to be, for instance, I don't know how to, but. Yeah. Get along. Get along with the Mexicans is, is uh, very, Fluid. even uh -huh, even though you don't know whatever. I remember when we get together for Iris party at the at the bowl at the bowl alley. Mm -hmm. There were people from US and there were people from Mexico, from Mexico as yeah. well. So I never see them before. And as, <laughs> as soon as I heard Spanish, oh, okay, come stay yeah. hey, How are you, man? Hey, what are you doing for? Yeah, well, no, 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 no. Ah, let's meet again and, and stuff like yeah. that. You know, even if you don't meet again, yes, you exactly. Always, like, let's meet again. Yeah, yeah carne asada and <laughs> beers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's very different. So you have to adapt. So of course, we are not to um, change the cultural of the U.S. to adapt to us because we move from our culture yeah. to here. So I think that's why we feel more comfortable by hanging out together with another mm -hmm. people from our cultural or, or race. And or... isn't it funny because you and I both are kind of exposed to the American culture because we're both from a northern state. Mm -hmm. We were grew up in a northern Mexican state, which has a lot more influence from the U.S. Like a bowling alley, there's there they look very similar in mm -hmm. Hermosillo. They look just like the ones we have here, except mm -hmm. the ones we have here are bigger, mm -hmm. and the prices are mm -hmm. more 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 expensive. A little bit. <laughs> the I mean, the food. There's so much American chains in Mexico that I guess the only ones we don't have are the the like the Five Guys, In and Out, or the the smaller ones. But McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC and there's so many of them that are already in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't even talk about Coca-Cola and Frito Lays and things like that. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that we have in Mexico, but somehow we can appropriate those to our culture. And like we have a lot of exposure through movies, TV shows, and a lot of us grew up crossing the border and do some shopping. Even the ads in Mexico sometimes are in in English. Yes. Like Sometimes, yes, or they're trans poorly translated. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's yes, we have a lot of influence from, from the U.S. From but the still, US. even with all of that influence, there's still a big cultural difference. Not mm -hmm. some shock, some of some of it is a cultural shock, but there are some cultural differences that they're just there to stay. I don't think a lot of that. I mean, yeah, we, I think I don't know how long we will stay here, but. The more we stare, the more we're going to adapt. I don't know if we ever become, but 
you adapt. So yeah, you we are an adaptable. You will you will make your own. You will be part of your own subculture. And my here. friends, I don't know. And my friends from from here will know me, and they know how I will become, or mm -hmm. I, I prefer to be treated. So it will be like fifty 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 how they behave and fifty percent how I behave. So yeah, try to match that. And if not, okay, too. Yeah, I guess as long as you and me, of course, we keep the same continuous improvement mindset. The cultural shocks are gonna be less and less, and just gonna be dealing with it and just move on, move on with life. Yes, and I think also the society, the society is growing on that regards as well. So the more, the more you advance, the more you are, or the more you grow, the more you realize like it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is what you have to offer to to the society itself. So I think we we yeah. will overcome soon, or at least it's my expectation. We will. Mm -hmm. And in 10 years from now, there's going to be more Mexicans than any other nationality here in the U.S. Yeah, well, Mark my words. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's all I had to talk about this topic. Do you want to share anything else today? No. All right. Well, that's it for today. And thank you very much for listening to us. I'm gonna, we're going to end it up here and we'll talk later. That sounds good to me. Thank you for having me. See you next time. Bye-bye. All right. So that wraps it up. This was episode, well, part three of my conversation with my friend Martin. I hope that you liked it. And please, if you like this content, share it, hit the like button, subscribe, whatever you're watching or, or listening to this, it'll be very, very helpful if you share this with your family and friends so that we can grow this platform and bring more awareness of the content that we're making here. And if you know or if you have any topic that you want me to discuss or anybody that would like to share their experience as an immigrant, it'll be really appreciated if you can share this so I can get in touch with, cut touch with them. Thank you very much again and talk to you later. Bye-bye.